If you've ever wondered how airplanes fly, then this is the video for you. <laughs> for thousands of years, man had dreamed of taking to the skies. But in the grand scheme of things, we just barely achieved it. It was just over a hundred years ago that we achieved flight. But why did it take humanity thousands of years to achieve something they had been dreaming of that long? How did we go from this just to, the goes on forever. to this under a hundred years. What eluded us for so long that we couldn't fly like the birds we had been watching from the ground for thousands of years? Our path to flight started about 300 years ago with a few smart people that started to really think about motion. They observed that no matter how we interacted with matter, the energy in that system never changed. The energy in that same system only changed from different forms to another. Take for instance a roller coaster. When a roller coaster car is stationary on top of a lift hill, it still has energy. That energy is in the form of potential energy. In this case, more specifically, gravitational potential energy. We can calculate exactly how much energy with this simple equation right here. But when the car is released from its brake and it starts to descend down the hill, some of that potential energy is transformed into kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is another way of saying moving energy and can be easily calculated with this equation right here. When the roller coaster cars reach the bottom of the hill, all of the potential energy is then transformed into kinetic energy. This concept is known as the law of conservation of energy. It states that energy can neither be created nor destroyed. A man named Bernoulli wanted to see if this principle applied to water as well. He derived this equation right here. And if you look closely, you'll find some of the same equations that we mentioned earlier. Here's kinetic energy and potential energy. In his experiments, he observed how water pressure would change as the diameter of the tube changes. He both experimentally and mathematically prove that water will increase its velocity as it moves through a smaller portion of the tube. We can see the same type of thing happen when we put our thumb over our garden hose. The water will speed up. As the law of conservation of energy tells us, the energy in the water has to remain the same at point one and point two, the wider portion of the tube and the more narrow portion of the tube. Since the velocity in the more narrow portion of the tube increases, or speeds up, we know that the pressure has to decrease to compensate. So in other words, velocity goes up, pressure goes down. And as velocity decreases, the pressure increases. This is one of the most fundamental building blocks in unlocking heavier than air flight. Bernoulli was a pioneer in what we call today fluid dynamics. A fluid is defined as a substance that has no defined shape and yields easily to pressure. A fluid can be either liquid or gas. Knowing this, we can apply the same fundamentals that Bernoulli laid out from water to air. Building upon this knowledge, an engineer named George Cayley would go on to develop what's known as a cambered airfoil. Nope, not that foil. An airfoil is actually the shape of a wing. A typical airfoil looks something like this. With this knowledge in hand, we can apply what we learned from Bernoulli from water to air. And that's exactly what engineer George Cayley did. He applied Bernoulli's principle to the wing of an aircraft. By adding a camber or a curve to the top surface of the wing, this would actually decrease the area in which the air is moving through, just like a narrowing tube in Bernoulli's principle. Since that air is moving over a curved surface, the velocity then speeds up and the pressure decreases. Meanwhile, the air on the bottom surface moves in a more straight path and therefore has a lower velocity and more pressure. The low pressure on top of the wing and the high pressure below it are what gives the wing lift. Essentially, the difference in pressure is what actually gives the airplane the ability to lift off the ground. This was the key to generating high amounts of lift in fixed wing aircraft. Having said that, 
It's not enough to just supply lift to an aircraft. Kaylee also gave us what's known as the four forces of flight. Lift, weight, drag, and thrust. Drag is caused by different types of air resistance acting on the aircraft. I'll cover the various types of different drag in a future video. Thrust is whatever engine you put on the plane, whether that be a jet, a propeller, or even a rocket. Which again, I can talk about all the different types of common thrust in a future video. Let me know down in the comments what kind of thrust you want to learn about first. In order to achieve what's known as steady level flight, all four of these forces have to be balanced. In other words, weight has to equal lift and drag has to equal thrust. It's an incredibly delicate balance. This was one of the most challenging things for the Wright brothers to figure out. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, please give it a like. If you enjoy this content and want to see more of it, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and Godspeed.